Welcome to Not Quite Therapy. This is Jeff Suek, the author of Beyond the Tempest Gate. Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about Beyond the Tempest Gate? Yes, Beyond the Tempest Gate is my dark fantasy novella. Um, it came out, I believe, 2013. So it's been out for a little while. Um, people seem to like it. It's my story of a, a man named Gabriel Artarius who is driven to seek out a demon named Elysia and try to destroy it uh, because this evil is older than time and he's taking it upon himself to put an end to it. <laughs> but where the story differs from what the traditional narrative is of the monster slayer is that we're, never, we're not quite sure if Gabriel is actually correct or if he is a narcissist who is driven to believe that he is supposed to wipe out this evil when really he's not supposed to. So within the traditional um, you know, evil slaying hero narrative, there is also, we're not even you know, all still the, the prevailing umbrella over that is this question of the king. Is he a hero or is he a uh, You find out in the end. You sure do. Okay. So who is your greatest influence? Uh, Tom Waits. A great musician. Great. He's not even just a musician. He's also a performance artist. He's a master conversationalist. Um, he is. I love. You know. I love. I also love Cormac McCarthy, Roger Zelesny, a lot of authors. But when it really comes down to it, Tom Waits to me embodies art and creativity and the kind of creative person that I want to be. That's a good goal. Speaking of goals, what goals do you have in store for yourself for the future? Um, well, I actually just am trying to break into travel writing, and I can pause for that, but I'm not sure. So I would really like to get into some freelance journalism. Um, but that's in addition to I'm always writing, sending to you know, publishing, and I just had some short stories published. Um, most recently in Spark, a creative anthology, and Ember, a German journal of luminous things. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to always improve, always get better, while still staying true to myself. That's always a point important. When did you realize you had to be a writer? Um, I think it was probably two points. One point I just have always wanted, I've always been uh, a storyteller. I think it was probably because I grew up in the country and both of my sisters were much older than me. And there weren't really any um, kids in the area that were my age. So I spent a lot of time in the woods by myself. And I just became very at home in my mind and my imagination. And I still am like that. I, I still, I feel more at home inside the world I create in my head than I do in the outside world. And then it was when I was about 14 or 15, I found Jack Kerouac's On the Road. And uh, just the exuberance for life and the love of human beings and the compassion and the empathy and just the, the drunken madness of the words, <laughs> just and that shaped how I see the world. It shaped right there. I want to see the world the way Jack Kerouac sees it and write about it. Cool. And where is your favorite place to write? Um, well, there's kind of two stages because my favorite place to do the initial creative process of writing is I like to go for long walks with a notebook and write by hand. I mean, I'll walk for hours. I'll go down the lake, I'll go downtown, hit restaurants, and just write all day at my leisure. And then when it comes time to really hammer things down, that's when I come home and I just sit my, at my desk and my work desk and get to work on the computer. And why do you write? 
Are you sending a message to people? Is it your therapy? Uh, I think writing itself is just something I do and, and do it as naturally as anything else. I don't know how to not write as weird like that. Really, I, I couldn't not write. But specifically right now, the published way I really am passionate about getting out there, stories of optimism, uh, passion and love and faith and just the, the value of human life. And I think I am driven a lot by the cynicism that I see in the world. And right now, I just, I, I feel like this is a time where people just don't look at God the simple things in life as being beautiful and valuable. Everybody's stuck in this rat race. Yeah. Is it even beyond a rat race now? It's something like more malicious. I personally feel like a lot of people right now are feeling directionless and purposeless. And it kind of comes into my psychic uh, mind. And I think my desire to create is largely in defiance of some hope and beauty in the face of all that. Well, that leads me to the next question. How much does everyday life affect your writing? Um, yeah, I think the last part of that probably largely answered that, but, but like I said, I don't have something where I'm like, okay, tonight I'm going to write at 8 o'clock. But it's writing in my mind. I'm always thinking about whatever I'm working on, what I want to work on, what I have worked on. I'm constantly tying things together in my mind, and um, it just never stops. And so it is, yeah, writing is connected directly to my daily experience of life. Cool. Is there anything else you want to tell the readers or viewers? Um that they should not listen to the machine that tells them that they are insignificant and that life is beautiful and, and we should all be digging it together and we should be, uh, I don't know, we should just be happy and we should live this life with passion and enjoy the moments that we have and enjoy the presence of these other remarkable creatures around us, human beings. I think that's a that's great advice. Well, thank you very much, Jeff Suwak, for being on Not Quite Therapy, and you have a great day. Thank you. That was fun. I appreciate it.